Paranormies Army, it is the most wonderful time of the year. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire, rocking around the Christmas tree, rewatching Home Alone for the thousandth time, and it is the debut of Paranormies Frightmare Before Christmas. For the month of December, we are replaying the best and scariest Paranormies episodes every single day of the month with a few surprises to keep things interesting for you guys. We've gained a lot of new subscribers lately, so to help catch up on our old videos, our two-part videos will be condensed into one video. Secondly, we will be giving two prizes of $500 away to the two people who find the Spirit Tech logo hidden in two of the videos throughout the month. This is not two Spirit Tech logos per video, it's two Spirit Tech logos in the entire month of December. And if the same person finds both, that person will win $1,000. Now, I'm sure some of you are wondering, what's in it for Johnny and Jordan? And to be honest with you guys, we have hit another crossroads with the channel. Most of you that are watching have no idea how YouTube works. At the end of the day, we're not, we're really not doing this for any other reason besides the fact that we want to study our analytics for the entire month and decide if it's worth it for us to do this again full time. And we're hoping that you guys as our viewers and our family and everybody that's been there from day one will understand that we're trying to connect with new people. Our analytics reached out to you and you're the community we have now, but there's a huge potential of people that just don't know who we are, that if we post every single day at 6 p.m., we might reach more people and that's kind of the, the gain that we want to try and reach is. As you guys have seen, we haven't been very active on the channel this year because over a year ago, we went all in on the channel, chasing a dream, and we completely crashed, burned, and failed miserably despite posting regularly. And we're still recovering from that. Our lives suffered greatly. Our relationship with each other suffered greatly, and this is what eventually led to me leaving the channel. We really, really want to do the channel full time again, but we also need to know that it's worth it for us financially to do so. The best month for YouTubers financially is December in terms of ad revenue and everything. So what we need you guys to do is hang out with us every single day at 6 p.m. Central Time in the live premieres and rewatch these old videos for us because if we get the support from you guys, we know that this is something that we are able to pursue at this point of our lives. And I know we see in the comments that a lot of you guys think that we're rich YouTubers and we're just being lazy, but that's not the case at all. In fact, most of the videos that you guys have already seen from last year that we're gonna be replaying this month, they barely made any money at all when they came out. So if this month goes really well for us, we'll know that this is worth it. And if it goes really well for us, what you guys get in return is a ton of brand new Paranormies episodes because we'll have the funds from this month to do so. So if you wanna see a ton of brand new Paranormies episodes in 2023, and have the chance to potentially win $1,000, tune in every day at 6 p.m. Central Time to hang out with us and try your luck. Thanks again for everybody in the Paranormies Army for continuing to support us, and good luck.
All across the Indian subcontinent, the belief in spirits has existed in the hearts and minds of the people for millennia. Some of the oldest and most established ghost stories come from India, and the most well-known creature in Indian folklore is known as the Boot, or Bhuta. The Boot is usually the ghost of a deceased person in someone's family. Indian people believe that these spirits linger around after death due to improper burial rituals, a violent death, or unfinished business in their life. They're stuck forever in a state of limbo, not being able to cross over into nirvana or reincarnation depending on that specific Indian tradition. Normally the boot can be found wandering cremation grounds, dilapidated buildings, or burning ghats. In mainstream Bengali culture, fairy tales often use the concept of the boot, and references to paranormal activity are found even in modern Bengali literature, movies, radio, and TV. This brings us to a man named Inesh, who moved to Canada 25 years ago with his mother Manisha. Inesh and his mother spent their lives living in extreme poverty, surviving off only two dollars and a bowl of rice every day. They were offered a second chance at life by a Canadian philanthropist when Inesh was just a small boy. The Canadian man sponsored the immigration of Inesh and his mother and made sure that Inesh got a proper education when he arrived. Inesh graduated from a university in Ontario three years ago with his doctorate. Inesh and his mother Manisha moved to Winnipeg shortly after his graduation where he received his very first opportunity to practice medicine. And it was shortly after that that Manisha fell ill. Inesh spent years caring for his sick mother in their small two-bedroom home. As her condition began to deteriorate, he begged her to take her to the ICU, and she refused. She knew that she was dying, but she wanted to spend her last days at home in her own bed. Manisha passed away a week before Christmas 2020, and Inesh was obviously devastated. And he was so devastated that he waited two full days where he mourned for his mother before he called paramedics to take her body away. Still grieving the death of his mother, he tried talking to her every single night. And for a while it felt like he was just talking to himself until one night he realized that he wasn't. He began to notice every morning before work, a white cat would greet him at his car in the alleyway behind his house before work. He thought this was strange, but he brushed it off. Soon after, he began to have dreams of this white cat morphing into his mother who would speak comforting words to him throughout the night. One such night, he awoke in the middle of his dream and saw his mother standing in his doorway. Inesh stared at her absolutely frozen. She looked real until he noticed that her feet were facing backwards and he immediately knew then that he was dealing with a boot. The boot is able to shapeshift into animals, like the white cat he had seen in the alleyway behind his house every morning. But more often than not, they're in their human form, and the only thing that makes them recognizable is their backwards feet. Inesh says that he may have still been dreaming when he saw his mother standing in the doorway, but he does believe that his mother is now lingering in the afterlife as a boot. He says if this is true, then the only reason that he can think this might be is that he did not cremate her body soon enough after death. Inesh now lives by himself in a downtown condo, but he can't bring himself to sell his child at home that he lived in with his mother for so many years. He says the spirit of his mother Manisha is so active in the house that he regularly goes there to visit her. Although he admits that he needs to let go and move on with his life, and it's very difficult knowing that she is there by herself. <laughs> Johnny wasn't able to join me on this investigation due to Christmas obligations, but I spent a night in Inesh and Manisha's home to see if I can get some answers for Inesh and to see if I can help Manisha finally pass on. It's a little bit, a little bit nerve wracking, but I got, I'll show you this. Got my stone from Patty, so. Whatever happens tonight, it's not going to be you-know-who. Whoa! Okay. Okay.
Hello, my name is Jordan. I see you already want to communicate. That's good. I know your son. His name is Inesh. And he let me... He let me film in your house. I think this was your bedroom, right? We'll play this back again so you guys can take another look. Um, I was, yeah, I was just sitting on the couch and the camera suddenly spun around like a top on my tripod. And because of that, I had to like spin it back around. And just as I was spinning it back around back onto the tripod, Manisha's bedroom door slammed shut. Because everything was happening so quickly in front of me, I totally forgot that my camera was still zoomed in. So you notice when I went to check in Manisha's room to see if she was in there, I'm looking around. I wasn't even looking through the viewfinder and I didn't realize that the camera was still zoomed in. So that's an explanation for why it looks so weird, but I did. I did figure it out in, an, in a few seconds. I'm gonna get the ovulus going. I think I hear the REM pod downstairs. Yeah, the REM pod's going downstairs. <sighs> Gotta get this ovulus going. Hello? Is your name Manisha? Oh my god. Redlining. You have anything that you want to say? You can use this device in my hand. It's called an ovulus. You can let go of the. This is called a REM pod. You can let it. You can let go of it now if you like. It's a weird basement. You used to live here with your son, Inesh, right? Or you still do? Okay, I'm gonna go upstairs now. You can follow me upstairs. You have to let go of that first. Empathy. Empathy? You know, I know your situation, and I know that you were very sick the last couple of years of your life, and I very much empathize with that. You know, I just lost my grandfather a couple of months ago, so I know how much, I know how hard it was for you guys to lose each other, you and your son. For those of you guys that are new to the channel, um, I actually, I lost my grandfather last month. So I knew that this one was gonna hit a little bit harder for me um, at this point in my life. But it also made me feel like I could connect emotionally to Manisha a little bit more because I could empathize with what she's probably feeling and what her son Inesh is feeling and have been feeling for the last year or so. I don't know if that's just something down here making it go off. But I know there was definite activity upstairs. Okay. Do you guys hear that? It sounds like all of the round pods are going off. One upstairs. And this one still isn't, that's interesting because this was, this was her bed.
just as I was about to go upstairs and like check out the, the loft, you notice like in the footage that I kind of stopped for a second and that's because I wasn't sure if the door to the loft was open or closed earlier. But we noticed, Johnny noticed it when he was editing the footage that that door actually had been previously closed and now it was open with REM pod activity happening upstairs. Oh, the one upstairs stopped. Whoa. Rabbit. Rabbit? Oh, there it was. Hello? Yeah. That's Manisha. Can you touch the REM pod one more time for me? Can't do that. Can't do that. You can't touch the REM pod? I thought you just... I heard you just do it. Hello? Is that Manisha? Can you touch it again, just one time, if you, if you love your son? Oh, there it is. You're marvelous. Yield. Yield. Whoa. Yield. The motion light on the stairs just went off again. Oh, okay. I'll back off. As soon as I got close, just went nuts. Was that you downstairs? Now you followed me upstairs? Motion light just went off and on again. Okay, Manisha, you can let go of it now. Please. Unbelievable. So a really cool feature of this house and something that was very helpful for me during the investigation was there was a motion light actually installed on the stairs and it's pointed directly downwards and you have to be standing on the stairs in order to set that motion light off. And it had gone off like multiple times while I was just standing upstairs, just trying to uh, communicate using the REM pod. And as that was going on, it kind of got me thinking that maybe if I can, if she's setting off the motion light, maybe I can set up our motion balls to see if she wanted to maybe communicate that way as well. So, Got a motion ball on top of the stairs. What's that? Hello? I thought I heard something in the bathroom. Manisha? Maybe not. Okay, I think, whoa, that ball's going off right now. Maybe not. Okay, I think, whoa, that ball's going off right now. Can you touch it again? Thank you for being active and using the equipment. Manisha, one more time, please. Can you touch the motion ball? Whoa. 
What? Now this thing can't, doesn't light up at all. Yeah, turn it off and on. Did it break? Okay. I think you definitely want, would rather talk to me up here. All right, I'll come up here. This REM pod's knocked over. Oh, I heard REM pod downstairs. Manisha, you were very responsive on this REM pod earlier. Can you touch it once if that was you who knocked it down? The motion ball, I mean. Scanning. Johnny and I believe that our motion activated balls are the most reliable piece of gear that we have because they cannot be activated by vibration or anything like that. They actually have to be touched. Um, so it was really interesting, you know, when I was filming that she lit it up once and then she knocked it over, which was, that was all really cool to see, but little did I know, and I didn't know until we reviewed the footage, that the balls had lit up a few times, like two or three times, before I was even ready to film, and it seems to us that maybe she was getting frustrated, like, it almost seemed like she was trying to let me know that she's not like a circus animal or anything like that. She was ready to communicate with the ball that I'd set up. I wasn't, I was still downstairs getting ready. So, you know, she was probably getting impatient with me and she let me know. What do you mean? What does that mean? Okay, I'm gonna go check downstairs again. The other REM pod, but feel free to touch this one if you're still up here. Death. Yeah, uh, you died. It was language. last year. Language. I know uh, we're probably not speaking your preferred language. I know you're from India. You'd probably rather speak Hindi. Sorry, I don't know how. But I know you lived in Canada for a long time and you learned how to speak English. So I think we can make proper contact that way. Obvious just said Nick. Johnny has a brother named Nick. Ryan. <laughs> and his middle name is Ryan. And so is mine.
your son Inesh, he told me that he thinks that you're something called a boot. And apparently he thought that, or he thinks that he, he started noticing you when he saw a white cat around the other on the property after you died. Was this you? Can you use the ovulus to say yes, you can touch one of the REM pods, maybe the one in your bedroom. I just heard a noise from the kitchen. If that was you, who was the the cat around the prop? My thing. If that was you, who was the cat around the property? Can you touch the REM pod in the bedroom for me, or the one upstairs? I know you like the one upstairs. That's what it seems like. Okay, I've been hearing that sound all night. Do you hear it? It's like a squealing sound, almost like an old belt. On an old car or something like that, like a loose belt. Can you tell me what that sound is? I heard something from the kitchen again. Okay, I'm thinking I'm gonna. I'm thinking I'm gonna do a test. I'm gonna lay in your bed if that's all right. I'm gonna have some equipment set up around me. And then maybe we can make better communication that way. Oh, okay. I'm hearing all kinds of sounds from the kitchen now. This was not there earlier. Okay, I'm gonna go upstairs, I'm gonna grab the camera, my other camera, and we're gonna get the test set up, all right? Okay. Play freaks me out every time. Manisha, did you knock my camera over? If you're up here right now, can you touch that room pod? No, I don't think you're here. I think you're already downstairs. I heard you in the kitchen. Anything else? Maybe I was trying to coax a reaction out of her because, you know, me being a stranger in her bed, you know, that would freak most people out. And Inesh had told me that he had seen a physical manifestation of his mother and I thought my best chance of that would just be to, you know, lay in her bed and ask her questions. And I can see why some people might say that would be like rude or disrespectful. I, I really didn't feel it that way. I was just trying to do everything I could to make the closest connection to this woman. This is the bed that she UK. This is the bed that she she died in. So well that's weird. Right off the bat. Kitty. It's just a hard yellow, it's not even flickering on the K2. Look at that. Doesn't matter where I move it. Okay. 
Well, I'll just put that right there and see if that changes. This is something that I can't believe happened. Um, I'm kind of like embarrassed that the ovulus said the word kitty, which is something like super important and super relevant to what Inesh had told me about, you know, seeing the cat uh, near his car in the back alleyway after his mother had passed and how uh, the boot can transform into animals and it said kitty. It was super relevant, but I totally missed it because I was so just hyper-focused on the K2 meter, which was just, it was like yellow the entire time and it wouldn't, you know, change no matter where I moved it. So that's why I didn't acknowledge it. I'm embarrassed, but that's what it is. I heard the room pot again. Benisha, can you tell me how long ago you uh, moved here from India? I'm just quiet now. No, I'm not your enemy. I'm just here to talk to you. So I know that you're, that's still you that's here. Can you touch that REM pod in front of me? Just touch that antenna. No, no, that's still you here with me. I'm definitely getting a really weird feeling. I'm actually in the bed that she died in. It almost feels wrong for me to be in here. The heat kicked on. Manisha, are you st are you still here? Or are you are you done for the night? Inner? You said that earlier, didn't you? What does that mean exactly? Manisha, are you st are you still here? Or are you are you done for the night? Inner. Inner. You said that earlier, didn't you? What does that mean exactly?
Anisha. that I saw in the shower I initially thought that it was just a naked figure maybe a naked woman in the shower but when we were reviewing the footage again it almost looks like like it's wearing some sort of like dark red clothing and I'm not exactly sure what a boot is supposed to look like I know they're just supposed to look human and to me it definitely does look human but I don't know if the red dress or red clothing has any sort of significance. So if anyone uh, has some insight on that, maybe somebody from India who grew up with these stories, like please let me know because I'm really interested to know. Oh. Look at this. Manisha, if I follow these footsteps, am I gonna find you? Okay. Okay, Manisha. I think it's time that we met face to face, right? Manisha? Ho! Oh. Okay, Manisha, do you know? If you want me to leave, I'll leave. But I thought we were friends. That didn't even do anything. Oh, where are you now? What just happened? I just saw, saw a shadow. Oh, I can't even talk. I saw a shadow walk down the hall. I don't even know what to do. There's still water on the floor. There's water on the floor. That is the, that's the fucking blanket that was at the edge of the bed. Her bed is in the bathtub. She just, my mic came off. Objects around the house just felt off to me the entire time. It's like I would like leave a room and I would feel like something was slightly amiss, but I couldn't ever really like figure out what it was in the moment. And looking at the footage, the best example of this is the blanket. 
It was on the bed before I set up the motion balls, and it was still on the bed when the ovulus said Nick Ryan. Ryan. After I came down from the motion ball test. So the blanket must have gone missing when I went upstairs to grab the Canon camera so I could set up the test in Manisha's room because when I was doing the test, it was gone. I'm gonna go upstairs, I'm gonna grab the camera, my other camera, and we're gonna get the test set up, all right? And if you look at the footage, when I go to turn the water off, the blanket is not there, then I go downstairs, I come back up, and that's when the blanket reappears again in the bathtub. This is something that's always fascinated me about the paranormal is things just kind of like moving around you but you don't really like know in the moment when it's happening and it's just that you know because we film everything we have that luxury to see things happening that we didn't catch in the moment. It's like have you ever thought you saw a shadow in the corner of your eye and then it's not there or you swear you put your phone down somewhere and then it ends up somewhere else. That's how I felt this entire night. Just things were just weird and just off the entire night. So before I start the motion light test, I was just reviewing the footage and it actually sounded like a light bulb burst in the basement. And another thing that's been bothering me is this K2 meter. It literally has not, it's just been solid yellow this entire time. I'll show you guys. It's just right in the middle. So I wanna go check to see if it's like that everywhere. If that's a hot spot or what's going on. Okay, no, it's already back to green so it does seem like it's a little bit hotter in Manisha's room especially like right in the middle of the bed oh a spike in the bathroom too that's very interesting. Well, closer to the tub. Oh, always kick those motion balls. Yellow again in the tub. So only the two spots that I've checked that have gone to yellow are the tub and her bed. It's really interesting. What about let's check once again. Still yellow in here. Yellow again in the bathtub. It's super interesting. It's still yellow in here. It's like it's the whole house almost. Or are you just everywhere in here? Start flickering a little bit there. This is insane. It's like everywhere. Oh. 
I've never seen it just solid in the middle in an entire building before. Are you still down here, Manisha? You're not the hot. I'm sorry. I, sorry, I kind of walked in on you there. I'm here just to talk. Okay, let's find that light bulb. K2 is just still solid yellow right now. It's in the same hand I'm holding the camera with. Can you touch this rem pod if you're down here? It's not that one. Oh yeah, there it is. The floor's creaking above my head. Oh yeah, there it is. The floor's creaking above my head. That's what it was right there. Wow. Oh, she must have been angry. Where's the, oh yeah. Where's the shards right there? Once again, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to upset you. No matter where it is in this place, this K2 meter is just solid yellow the entire time. It literally has not moved. Oh my God. All right. I got to check that out. Oh, there's a red pod. Anisha. Oh, there's a red pod. Anisha! At one point earlier in the night, as I was coming up the stairs, I thought I had seen a shadow in the kitchen. I just saw, saw a shadow. Oh, I can't even talk. I saw a shadow walk down the hall. But I wasn't 100% sure but I did get some confirmation looking back on the footage. You can definitely see a shadow move into the living room. Yeah, it's the one upstairs. Oh my God. You really don't have to make me run around. We can just sit and talk. Okay, I'm going to turn this off now, and then I'm going to go downstairs, and we'll see if we can talk that way. Okay, Manisha? Thanks. Still, no matter where I put this thing in this house. Tapping. Okay, I'm coming downstairs. Okay. <sighs> what do I do? Okay, 
Okay, that's fine. I'm still coming downstairs. I had initially gone upstairs to check out some REM pod action and when I went back downstairs she closed the door on me and I don't know if she was trying to keep me up there or what was going on but I, um, when I got back downstairs I looked to my left and I saw that the uh, Canon camera had stopped recording because the SD card was full so at that point is when I just went into Manisha's bedroom once again to grab a new SD card for the Canon. Now you're playing games with me, aren't you? Okay, Manisha. This is a test that I've been wanting to bring back for a long time and we haven't done it in almost a year since the Fort Gary Hotel and that's the motion light test and the idea of it is basically just set up a motion light and then I'll ask questions and then the spirit can light it up if the answer is yes or they can just leave it alone if the answer is no. And at the Fort Gary Hotel we did get a really good response, a really intelligent response. and. I felt this was the perfect time to bring it back because Manisha had been really responsive all night and I felt that maybe she did want to actually have a conversation and answer some of my questions. Okay. Manisha? Oh, I think that was just me. Okay, Manisha, this is a motion light that is in your bed right now and I just wanna use it to ask you some questions and you can tell me the answer so if the answer is yes to my question all you gotta do is just wave your hand in front of it or just move in front of it some way so that I know that the answer is yes to the question and if the answer is no you don't have to light it up at all so can you light it up for me if you're in this room right now Oh, that might have been me though. I just reached. Okay, I'm gonna leave the room. Oh, I think that was me again. I'm not moving much though, that's weird. Okay. So, Manisha, I know that you miss your son, but you know that you can't stay here forever, right? Your son, Inesh, he needs you to move on, and it seems like you haven't been able to. Is that because you are scared to move on? and leave your son behind. That's what I was thinking. Oh. So Inesh told me that he thinks that the reason, a big reason you haven't been able to move on is because he didn't take care of you soon enough after you died and have you taken away. Is that true? Hmm. 
can you, you think you can forgive your son for that? Whoa. All right. Is that, is that a yes? Can you light it up one more time? Okay. So if you can forgive your son, you think that you can move on for him. Yeah. After the motion light test, I began to feel a lot more comfortable in the house. I think that Manisha may have been defending her home, which is why she seemed to be a lot more aggressive earlier on in the night, but she seemed to be more comfortable with me and I got more comfortable with her. So that's the point where I decided that I'd gotten what I came for and I was gonna spend the night. And even though her energy seemed to die down, uh, towards the end of the motion light test, she did make herself known throughout the night and it sounds like she was checking on me while I was slept to see if I was still there. This investigation has really opened my eyes to paranormal beliefs and experiences from a culture that differs greatly from the one that I grew up in. And it's raised one burning question in my mind. Are paranormal entities from around the world all the same and are only known by different names? Or do they truly differ? Are these physical manifestations of these spirits directly affected by that particular culture's beliefs and tradition? My experience with an Indian boot did not yield results that would truly make me feel like I was dealing with anything different than what I had encountered in the past. However, I do realize that my one night of experience cannot discredit thousands of years of belief and tradition from the Indian people, which is one of the oldest cultures in human history. So I ask you again, Paranormies Army, what do you think? Since I spent the night in Inesh and Manisha's house, it's only been, it's been less than a week, but Inesh told me that since I spent the night there, he does feel that his mother's spirit is less responsive than it usually is, and this leads him to believe that his mother is at the very least trying to move on so that they can both move on in his life and in her afterlife. Investigating Solo was a really great experience that I very much enjoyed. Um, although I feel that Johnny and I worked better as a team, I feel like this was a really great test of my investigating skills as well as my filming skills. Are there things that I could have done better? Yeah, absolutely, but thankfully, I probably won't have to do this again, at least not for a while, and Johnny will definitely be back for the next episode. We want to know, what are some foreign paranormal beliefs that you find fascinating? Let us know in the comments below and we'll definitely look into them. Until next time, Paranormies Army. We hope you had a very Merry Christmas and we wish all of you the best of luck in the new year. They were offered a second chance at life by a Canadian, th by a Canadian philanthropist, that's a hard word to say, philanthropist? <laughs> a Canadian philanthropist. <laughs> oh, that's such a hard word to say. On camera? They are offered <laughs> a second chance at life by a Canadian good guy. I've been through the troubles, it's how to let you in. I've been giving you the run around. I double on the doses, I don't need emotion.